Hey y'all, I thought I'd give, or take this little uh, moment to just uh, give a little show and tell on how to change line properly on a spin cast reel. So, first of all, I am removing the line on this Zebco 404. I have set it here, still in its reel mount, in order to give it some uh, something to hold on to. I have strung it through the uh, eye up here on the uh, pole, and I took the second part of the pole off. Now I push the free spool on the. on the uh, reel, you know, the button on the back, in order to just let it pull out. Now, I wrapped it around this old, um, well, this old bit of, uh, yeah, I can find words today. <laughs> I'm wrapping it around this old uh, line line roll and just uh, once I got it around a couple times and pulled it tight I don't have to hold the line anymore and I can just roll it or I can use two hands and just pull the line wrap it around and if you have a actual apparatus at home that can hold this and you have a little handle on it you can just spin it or whatever until you pull all the line off um, you can use an old reel you can use a little piece of cardboard that's what I normally use but since I had this laying around I figured I might as well use it um, and that's all you do in order to take the line off and, you know, keep it nice and tidy. Now, what you do with the line, normally you throw it in the trash or you put it in one of the recycling bins for fishing line that's at your local landing or, you know, sometimes they have them at uh, bait and tackle shops sometimes um, it's not good at all to just throw it out in the water it's not good to just cut your line and leave it in the water leave it on the shoreline always pick it up because if you're like me and you hook a piece of fishing line or a tangle or something else that someone just cut off and left in the water and you end up losing a lure, or you end up losing a big fish because of it. I don't know about you, but I can get really pissed about something like that. You know, someone didn't take the time to clean up, and, you know, they're harming the environment and everything like that. Yeah, it's biodegradable. Over ten years, you know, ten years and it will biodegrade. But during those 10 years, you know, it can tangle around fish, it can choke them, it can, you know. Have you seen turtles? <laughs> yeah, I'm not going to get in the whole plastic straws and turtle thing because that's just fucking ridiculous. But no, the, uh, remember the pop bottle six-pack rings? before and everything you're supposed to cut those i still cut those even if they have low perforations those aren't those aren't always good i still cut them because those and fish line knots if they're in a big loop little turtle swims through those gets caught you know how sharp fishing line is fishing line can slice your finger wide open you know, you get line, you get fishing line, t 
tight enough and it can choke someone to death. It can slice an arm wide open. You know, you get your hand wrapped around some fishing line and then a really big catfish grabs your bait, your lure, and takes off the other direction. And you have a whole bunch of line wrapped around your hand. Well, <laughs> you better hope you're wearing gloves because you are about to get bloody. You know, braid, less so, but monofilament and fluorocarbon line can be really, really sharp. It may not seem that way, but it can be really sharp and dangerous. But, uh, yeah. Even to fish and everything like that, they grow, it cuts right through them. You know, a fish will be choked to death, cut in half as it grows. Turtle, same thing. You know, you don't want to do that to your local wildlife. Pick up after yourself, take the line home, throw it in the trash. You know, be kind to the environment, pick up after yourself. <laughs> I'm not your mother, but no one should have to tell you this. You know, I'm going to end up taking this line, putting it in my box, and in the next month or so, eventually when I clean out my box, it's going to get tossed. Until then, I might add more line to it. Um, all the time, every time that I uh, tie something on and have to clip some line, I have this old worm container. There's no dirt in here. The only thing in here is fishing line. I open up the top, stick my uh, forceps in it, and let the line go. And I try and stuff it all in here. Right now there's a bunch of coiled up little chunks of line in that worm container. So, every time I, you know, nip off a chunk of line and have to retie, I even put that in a little container. I don't let that fall on the ground. Cigarette butts, I don't smoke, but I see those all over the ground. You know, pick up after yourselves, guys <laughs> and gals. You know, Keep nature pure for your kids, your grandkids, your great-grandkids. Otherwise, who knows if there will be any nature left if we all destroy it right now, you know, with our trash and everything else. But that's a little rant and everything else. All right, after we've got to the end of the line, now we have to open up the reel. You gotta go inside here and you gotta clip off the end of the line. Uh, I already did that. You pull it through the end, you finish wrapping, and then you take the end of the line and you find some way to tape it so that it won't come undone. And that's all you do. You put that in your garbage bag or something. <laughs> Someone's trying to drag race way over there. But uh, that's what you do. Uh, next step would be putting the new line on the reel. Uh, let me get that set up since I need two hands to do so. 
and then we will well, I'll start to show you how to do that. Alrighty then, so first step, since I am uh, removing line from my other reel down there, since the since the handle broke off inside and you know, I can't use it anymore, I'm going to be taking the new line off of that one and putting it on this one. Um, it would be similar to um, doing a new spool. Um, basically, you would set up the new spool at the end of this, having someone hold it, or um, putting it on top of a box with a pencil through the middle. I'll just use this one as an example, and having it sit out here but uh, with something holding it so that all the line just doesn't rip off and then you have a lot of loose line. Um, because you don't want the line being loose when you're doing this. Um, so, since I have the line coming off of that one, and I always thread it through the first eye loop here, it makes sure it... Uh, comes straight and I don't have any extra issues you have to thread it through the eye of the front cover otherwise it won't work you can't put the uh, front cover on after you put it uh, after you have it on here because it just doesn't work out if you have something in between um, yeah, words. I can't use them today. Sorry. But anyway, uh, you take the line and you want to put a loop knot in it. And the way to do a loop knot, um, you can see one of my other videos. Um, hopefully I'll have a video on doing various knots in the near future. But you need to do a loop knot you know, basically put a loop at the end. And then you put the loop around the end here and wrap it around a couple times in the same direction that the head of this spins. Just give it a couple wraps so that uh, the little notches on your spin, on your uh, reel, Oh. Alrighty then, after you have wrapped a couple times around your spool, you need to make sure you hold your line at the same time that you are putting on your cap. Now you want to make sure that your cap goes on without pinching the line in the teeth of your, uh, of your screw threads here. And you want to make sure that it's nice and tight and you're not pulling out line as in it's not spinning around the, uh, the spindle by itself. So now that you have some line wound on and you can reel and it's catching that little tooth on the spindle here, what you want to do is hold about 18 inches out, or basically right behind your little eyelet, while someone holds the spool at the other end, or in this case, I have my other um, reel sitting down there, and its weight is going to sit there, and I'm just going to pull line off of it and be very careful about it. Now, I do need two hands to do this, so I can't really show you. But, basically, I'm going to be holding up here with one hand. And then I'm going to be uh, turning the reel with the other. I'm going to go until, basically, um, on the spindle, if you can see in there... 
basically below that metal piece, there's a plastic piece. And I want to stay a couple millimeters below that. So basically an eighth of an inch below that metal piece and the plastic piece. Otherwise, you'll have too much on there. It'll get stuck and wrapped up in the metal piece and underneath it, and it won't cast very well. But since the spindle on that one is smaller than this one, I should be able to fit all the line that I have on that one on this one with room to spare. And I'm not too worried about it. So I'm just going to do all that. And when I'm done, I just have to clip the line off of that one and rig up this one for fishing and should be good. But that is it for this little tutorial. And I hope this information helps.